Hey y'all, what's good beautiful people? It's your girl Tay and I'm here yet again with another update video. So definitely make sure you guys smash that like button, comment down below, subscribe, plus push the post notification bell button so that way anytime I upload a video you will be notified. So hopefully I can get through this video. They are, they have been doing work on my, the, our whole Excuse me, y'all. They have been doing work on our whole complex for a while. And it was supposed to originally be, they redid the roof for everybody. And it was supposed to only be for two weeks, you know, each, uh, each, I don't know how to say it, but each section of the unit, because there's like three or four different sections here. So my section or my building rather was supposed to be done in two weeks and they're still not done. So every day I see them outside and I'm like, oh my God, they're here. They're supposed to come between the hours of eight and five. Sometimes they start earlier than that. And it's just, it's really annoying. It's really, really, really annoying. But anyways, you guys, let's jump right into the news for today. Today is supposed to be the last day of this heat wave. Um, and I'm happy about it. It's giving me an opportunity to kind of, um, I need to clean my, what do you call that? My AC is supposed to be clean. Like every two weeks, I kind of wiped the filter yesterday, but, um, I want to actually like clean it, clean it, but it's so hot that I can't have it off for more than five minutes. But anyways, I don't know why I went into all of that. You guys just giving y'all some updates because I just love talking to y'all. But anyways, uh, have y'all noticed the gas prices? They were going down, at least in California where I'm at, they were going down and I want to say they were below $5. Um, they, there, the gas was, I want to say for me, you know, I try to use, uh, the middle grade and the high grade, um, and they were, I want to say like 450 to 489, not that bad, but then all of a sudden, and I hadn't been to the gas station in a couple of days, but when I just kind of glanced over at it one day when I was out and about, I noticed that they were over $5 again, and I'm like, what happened? Gas prices in Southern California are soaring once again. Residents in the Golden State are now paying more than $2 above the national average for a gallon of regular unleaded gasoline, according to AAA. The national average stands at $3.73 per gallon. I wish I could be wherever that is. I know that's just a national average, but it doesn't mean that any state may necessarily have that. But I wish that there was a gas station in California where I can go and fill up for $3.73. While that number rises to $5.80 in California, so our average in California for gas is $5.80, okay? Prices are even higher if you live in Los Angeles, Long Beach, and Orange County areas, and unfortunately, I live in one of those counties. Uh, LA Long Beach, $5.84 per gallon of regular use as of September the 26th, which is 41 cents more than a week ago. 55 cents more than a month ago, $1.43 more than a year ago, okay? And then it gives a breakdown of Orange County. It says strict environmental regulations that raise prices more than a dollar a gallon along with second highest gas tax in the nation are contributing factors in California's prices, always being among the nation's highest, okay? <sighs> I just want them to fix it. Like, I just want y'all to fix it. Do whatever it is that you need to do to fix it is what I want you to do. Because gas prices is, is hectic for some people. It's hectic for me. You know, I have a larger vehicle because I have a larger family. So I can't go to the gas station and fill up with $20, $30. Gone were the days. And I so miss my Toyota Prius that I used to have where I can fill that thing up for $20 um, because it's not gone are the day gone are the days you guys gone are the days uh moving on from that though y'all let me know what the gas prices are where you are currently because i would love to know um new study shows that drinking two to three cups of coffee a day linked with longer lifespan and guess what i'm drinking today y'all a cup of cozy coffee uh, drinking two to three cups of coffee a day would could be linked to a longer lifespan. New search, 
The research suggests when compared with avoiding coffee, it was also associated with lower risk of cardiovascular disease, the study found. Uh, the findings apply to ground instant and decaffeinated varieties of the drink, and researchers say they suggest coffee consumption should be considered a part of a healthy lifestyle. According to the study, the greatest risk reduction was seen with two to three cups per day. The results suggest that mild to moderate intake of ground instant and decaffeinated coffee should be considered part of a healthy lifestyle. Okay, compared with no coffee drinking, this was associated with a 14%, 27%, and 11% lower likelihood of death for decaffeinated ground and instant preparations, respectively. Study author Professor Peter Kistler of Baker Heart and Diabetes Research Institute who's located in Australia said, in this large observational study ground, instant and decaffeinated coffee were associated with equivalent reductions in the incidence of cardiovascular disease and death from cardiovascular disease or any cause. The results suggest that mild to moderate intake of ground, instant and decaffeinated coffee should be considered a part of a healthy lifestyle. The study examined the links between types of coffee and heart rhythms, cardiovascular disease and death using data from the UK Biobank study, which recruited a adults between the ages of 40 and 69 years of age. Cardiovascular disease was made up of coronary heart disease, congestive heart failure, and ischemic stroke. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but Professor Kistler said caffeine is the most well-known constitute in coffee, but the beverage contains more than 100 bio biologically active components. It is likely that the non-caffeinated compounds were responsible for the positive relationship observed between coffee drinking and cardiovascular disease and survival. Our findings indicate that drinking modest amounts of coffee of all types should be discouraged, but can be enjoyed as a heart healthy behavior. The study included 449,563 people who completed a questionnaire asking how many cups of coffee they drank each day and whether they usually drink instant, ground, or decaffeinated coffee. Y'all let me know what y'all think. I don't personally drink coffee on a regular basis because I do have a un- diagnosed heart condition now just to give you guys a little bit of history on that um as to why i say undiagnosed is because i've gone to the doctor i've done the stress test which is when they have you on the treadmill to monitor your blood pressure and your heart rate and they couldn't find anything wrong with my heart rate now my blood pressure on the other hand was pretty high okay um and i still think that that has something to do with my heart because you know you have your blood pressure that gives you the two numbers you have your, your systolic and your diastolic uh numbers and i can't remember which one it was but the lower number was pretty high high and that's the one that's linked to cardiovascular health in, in terms of what I was told. So um, I say undiagnosed because I went to the doctor several times. Um, there was this one day where my heart was palpitating fast and then it would slow down and then it would go fast again and then it would slow down and it would go fast again and then it would slow down and they were kind of coming like every couple of minutes almost like contractions so I went to the hospital because it's happened to me before but I've never been able to get them to catch it on the EKG machine and this time they finally were able to see it but they couldn't figure out where it was coming from now to be perfectly honest I don't think they did all that they could do to actually find out the source of the issue they just put me on the machine said well we can see the fluctuations in your heart rhythm but they didn't do anything to see where it's coming from or anything like that. So with that being said, um, when I did finally speak to my primary care physician, they told me, you know, just don't drink any coffee and of course no highly caffeinated drinks. So I already don't drink highly caffeinated soda. Like I don't drink Coke and Pepsi, Mountain Dew, things of that, that I know is going to give me a jolt. But with coffee, I tend to do coffee, regular caffeinated coffee, maybe one to two times a month. And, you know, like I told you guys, I switched, I still need the energy boost. So I drink, uh, caffeinated tea because it has less caffeine in it than coffee but I do have decaffeinated coffee that I do like to drink just more so for the taste so y'all let me know I said all of that to say y'all let me know I'm actually drinking a cup of half decaffeinated and regular coffee this morning um, because I'm a little bit more tired than normal and I wanted to give myself a little bit of an energy boost before my shift but anyways y'all let me know what you think uh, drinking decaffeinated coffee as a part of a healthy heart lifestyle, to me, I'm game. I mean, 
I know that there are other effects that coffee can have on your body, so just be mindful of that. And as always, I'm going to encourage you guys to have a conversation with your primary care physician because I am not that, and I cannot sit here and give you any type of medical advice. I am literally just sharing my own experience and my opinions. You know what I'm saying? Take it as you will. I just have to say that because I don't want nobody to come back and say, I've been drinking decaffeinated coffee, and the doctor said, no, no, no. I didn't tell you to start drinking decaffeinated coffee. I'm giving you some, some information, and I'm letting you know what I have done and what I'm going to do. And moving forward, I think I'm going to try to incorporate uh, decaffeinated coffee into a heart healthy lifestyle. And I'll let y'all know how that turns out. Moving on from that, though. Um, hold on. So Congress flirts with government shutdown as mansion permitting bill may drag down the funding package. I don't know what funding package they're talking about, but it's like these funding packages don't be doing nothing for us. So who are you trying to fund yourself? Um, the government is days away from shutting down and the Senate may not have the votes to pass the initial version of its funding bill as top Democrats press ahead on the deal with Senator Joe Manchin that may fail. Okay, Manchin of uh, West Virginia agreed to help Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer pass Democrats' social tax and spending bill last month. In exchange, Schumer promised Manchin a vote on an energy permitting reform to speed new projects. So they're about to come through with a little drill or whatever these little machines are, y'all. So if y'all hear the noise, I do apologize okay um they are combining that with government funding with a government funding bill that must pass uh or else trigger a government shutdown however with a major test vote with a 60 vote threshold set for uh i don't know if this was this past tuesday or this coming tuesday the legislation may not have the support to pass with opposition coming from both parties mansion's office says he is still optimistic he was working the phones all weekend and has shored up several more uh i want it says our votes i don't know if that's republican votes He's still confident there is a path to 60 votes in total. This moment won't come again, and he continues to remind his colleagues of that, okay? Schumer has also insisted he will follow through on his deal with Manchin. He said um, he is working hard to have it pass. If the vote fails, Congress will be forced to scramble to pass a government funding bill before midnight Friday. And again, I'm not sure if they're talking about this Friday or previous Friday. Let me see if this gives me a date as to when this came out. This was published by Fox News September the 26th. Okay, so was that yesterday or Monday? So I think this is uh, all so expected to happen within this week that we're in let me get back to where i was hold on okay it is possible that mansion's permitting reform provision will be stripped from the funding bill if it fails tuesday night which was yesterday so lawmakers can advance the rest of the package later in the week however that time could be close among options to help avert a shutdown, lawmakers could pass a one or two day funding bill before passing a bigger package to keep the government funded until after the elections. Another possibility would be both parties in the Senate could cooperate to speed along the funding bill and beat the Friday night buzzer. OK, so they're trying to fund the government. Um, other issues may also impact votes on the funding bill. According to a source, the package will include disaster relief for Jackson, Mississippi, winter heating assistance, food and drug administration, user fee reauthorization, and more than 12, I know y'all not going to like this, more than 12 billion in new assistance for Ukraine. And I'm going to stop right there. Now, I spoke on this. Um... I know I spoke on this at, at one point in time and I said, you know, it's not so much an issue that they are helping uh, Ukraine because at the end of the day, with everything that we have going on here, we have things going on here. Yes, but we're not as far as we know. Let me just put that out there because we don't get told everything and we don't know everything. As far as we know, we are not under attack right now. And so there is a significant difference in saying, hey, we want you guys to put money aside for this, for our kids' education, for school, for the teachers, for uh, transportation, for electricity, for uh, internet access, for low income. Family. All of that stuff I understand, but there's a really big difference in those things and them sending money over there to a country that is in need, to people who are losing their lives, innocent people. We're not talking about people who signed up for war or to be in an army and some of them haven't signed up. Some of them were drafted because of the situation. So with that being said, people are losing for them. It's like the pandemic all over again. You know what I mean? Except uh, 
people are losing their lives a lot quickly, a lot quicker than would have happened for them catching the virus, if, if I'm making any sense, okay? People are literally running for their lives under heavy fire, okay? Innocent people. So there's a really big difference in the things that we are yelling and screaming about. And I'm not trying to take away the significance and say that those things aren't important because they are. But I'm just trying to say that from my standpoint as a human being, there's a really big difference in those things and how urgent they are versus people who are literally running with their children, holding them, trying not to get hit in the head with a missile and lose their lives, if that makes any sense. So, and I say that because I know there's going to be a couple of you guys who don't care, who are going to say some things that are ignorant, even still, in the comments and talk about how you don't want them to be helping other countries. I feel like, you know, President Biden is, and I don't know for sure, thinking on the hopes of, you know, Maybe down the line, I don't know if they'll ever be of assistance to the United States of America, but I mean, you never know. What's, what's the point of burning bridges? I wouldn't want to burn bridges as a country with anybody, okay? So, with that being said, um, yeah, do I think that they need to be doing more for the United States of America? Absolutely. But do I feel sour or bitter about the fact that they're doing stuff for a country, like I said, with people, women and children who are not a part of the war, who are not a part of everything that's going on, but who are being forced to be a part of it. People who went over there for education purposes are not able to leave based on the color of their skin. There's a lot of stuff that's going on over there that people didn't sign up for. And, and to me, that surpasses the need for internet access. Okay, so with that being said, we are going to end off with emergency snap maximum benefits for the month of October. Okay, now I'm going to refresh my screen here, see if there are any additional states that has been added so that I can write them down. So I have Alabama, November the 1st, and then I have Colorado, which is new. So we're going to take a look at that. Colorado, we have October the 6th through October the 12th, okay? Colorado, October the 6th through October the 12th, D.C. regular issuance, Hawaii, which is new. We're going to take a look at that. Hawaii is going to be November the 14th. Hawaii, November the 14th. Then we have Illinois, October the 21st through the 29th. Kansas, which is also new. Come on, Kansas. Kansas is going to be November the 21st through the 30th. November the 21st through the 30th for Kansas. Then we have Louisiana, October 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th. Maine, October the 7th. New Jersey, October the 1st through the 5th. New Mexico, October the 1st through the 31st. North Carolina, October the 22nd through the 31st. Then we have Oregon, uh, October the 10th, 28th, and then a final run November the 1st. Did I do North Carolina? I did. Rhode Island, we have, do I have Pennsylvania? Hold on, y'all. Let me take this list off of my clipboard. Okay, I don't have Pennsylvania, so let me take a look at Pennsylvania really quickly here. Okay, so for Pennsylvania, we have October the 18th through the 22nd. Then we have the 25th through the 29th, and then a final run on December the 9th for Pennsylvania. So October 18th through the 22nd, and then the 25th through the 29th, and then a final run December the 9th for Pennsylvania, okay? Then we have Rhode Island, October the 3rd. South Carolina, we have October the 1st through the 19th. Texas, we have October the 3rd through the 7th. Utah, we have October the 29th. Washington, we have October the 4th through the 20th, staggered. Then we have West Virginia, October the 4th through November the 9th. Then we have Virginia, October the 16th. And then finally, Wisconsin, October the 15th through, Dece no, October the 15th. And then a final run, December the 10th. All right, you guys, as always, I hope this information has been, had, has been in some way helpful or useful to you guys in the least little bit. Do me a favor if you haven't already. Don't forget to smash that like button because it really does help to let YouTube know that you like what I'm doing and you want me to stick around. As always, you guys, I'm going to encourage you to drop some yellow hearts down below in the comment section. Let me know you made it all the way to the end of the video. Don't forget to check out my description box as I will have some links to some of my favorite products and services as well as a link for Amazon Prime, which you can try 30 days free on me. 
And as always, I'm going to say, remember to live, love, elevate, and definitely I will see you in the next video. Peace, y'all. Bye.